I think there's bound to be some questions on that. You seem to have enraged just about everybody with the, <laughs> with the, with the that was my plan. scale. Um, Lawrence, you're, you're just bouncing out of your seat, aren't you? I don't want to be confused with Richard Dawkins here, but I think uh, um, uh, as from a physics perspective, I think everything you said is nonsense. Um, and maybe I'm being too polite, but uh, uh, I, I, I see, I cannot, I, there's no way in which I could see the, the, the uh, to get quantum coherence, you need very, very carefully prepared states with no I external interactions at all. And I can't see a, uh, a, a system that's less uh, like that than, than, than the human brain or the human body where there I are interactions. But, all, but hold on. But the other thing about this quantum information going backwards in time is just the way you said it is just not true. It's a, I mean, we can talk about it later, but you're just wrong. OK? Uh, well, excuse me, but um, your first point is, yeah, the brain's too warm and wet and noisy, which none of which are true. Uh, recent reports have shown uh, room temperature, uh, macroscopic, uh, quantum spin transfer, quantum states, and biological uh, studies have shown enhanced quantum spin transfer with increasing temperature through organic molecules, the same type of, of uh, aromatic amino acids in the, in the, the core of the, of the proteins. And, uh, and uh, so it's not true that it's a priori impossible. And in fact, uh, Rich, uh, what's it, David Auschalam at UC Santa Barbara continues to show more and more warmer and warmer macroscopic quantum state reductions. And entanglement occurs all the time without, you know, without decoherence. Now, the other thing about backward time, I didn't, I, you know, it'd be more correct to say that in the quantum world there is no flow of time. We're in the. Well, hang on. There, there's a lot of people who disagree. A lot of physicists. I'm not a physicist. Roger, said, Roger made this claim. Uh, Aharonov uh, has made the same claim of, of the dual vector theory with, with each collapse sending quantum information backwards in time. Um, the uh, um, Feynman uh, has, the, has a backward time effect in classical. So that's not true. Can we? Well, what does that mean? Is, is quantum information the unconscious? Is that... You're saying well, no, no, no. If you haven't got a, it's not, it's not going. It's not, it's, it's just going into the ether. So uh, no, I mean we can't hear you without the microphone. Um, so, um, <laughs> and I know that's important to you, Lawrence. <laughs> so, um, there is a, there is a, an issue here, which is the, uh, the, there was an issue of U.S. News and World Report that Stuart just mentioned on um, the science of the soul. I think it was called. And you, you were in the, the piece, you also mentioned uh, that Terry was there. There was some, com uh, would you like to say something from the neurocomputational perspective on this? Well, um, I mean, you go, go and sit, it's fine. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, since uh, uh, you did raise my name in vain, I thought it would be only fair to... <laughs> I was hoping you'd comment. Um, so, uh, and I want to make this a general point, and not just to uh, respond to the lecture, and that has to do with uh, what we now know about mechanisms in the brain. We're still at a very early stage. Uh, we see a wide variety of signals. Uh, 40 hertz signal is a particularly interesting one because uh, you see it not just during the wake state, but also during sleep. In fact, the original experiments done uh, in uh, Wolf Singer's lab were anesthetized cats. Ketamine. And, um, but, uh, but that, that uh, I think uh, our understanding of those signals is, is, like I said, still very early days. We just don't really have enough knowledge yet to know either their significance or their biophysical mechanisms. So I just want to lay that on the table that we just don't know. I, I would, personally wouldn't bet on this one. Uh, but having been said, um, one of the issues that came up earlier today was the issue of, of, of reason and logic in providing uh, us with tools and techniques and science to actually get to the bottom of, of a problem and solve them in a way that you can really be uh, confident of. And, and this is something that Francis was echoed in his, his, uh, the quotes that I gave earlier. Um, so humans aren't very good at reasoning. I mean, it, it is true that you know, after a lot of training in a particular field, you can get 
pretty good at you know, figuring out the right control experiments and figuring out exactly what you need to do in order to prove it, but often that doesn't even transfer to other fields. Uh, you, know, you can easily make mistakes, and physicists are very good at this, by the way, when, uh, when trying to uh, debug uh, the, uh, who was it, uh, the, the mystic, the uh, Uri Geller, right? It, there were, uh, it was two physicists that were taken in because they just didn't know anything about magic. They didn't know the right questions to ask. And in some ways, you know, physicists are uh, Sir, pretty I'm not good at reasoning. Spoons. You know, it, please. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply that. Although, you or know, you're implying that I don't have reason. No, 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 no. I'm, no. I'm just making a general point about reason, uh, and I'll get I'll get back in a moment to the issue. Um, where <clears throat> where I think rationality and reason really shine is um, in being able to go step by step through the evidence that you have, putting together rational arguments and writing a paper. But is that actually how we make discoveries? Right? You know, if you read a paper, you'll never figure out how they actually got to the point. And we all know, I mean, working scientists know that often it's an accident, or often it's an idea you have in the shower. Where's, where do those ideas come from? They're not deductive. Often they're inductive from a lot of experiments and experience, and something clicks, and it's not something that you can program. It's not a computer. And what do you call this? Well, unconsciousness is kind of the grab bag for things that <clears throat> you're not aware of, things that are happening at a level in the brain where we don't have conscious access. Uh, and ultimately, that's where intuition comes from and new ideas. And I think it would be a mistake to ignore that. And, and to, to you know, uh, shove it under the rug. I mean, we're, you know, we're a cool calculating scientists. We do things logically. We make deductions. It's true. That's one aspect of proving it to your colleagues. But that's not the whole story for science. And I think that we're using our brains in perhaps the same way that ordinary people, not ordinary people, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, <Humans>. you, <laughs> that, uh, that humans use for solving problems in their everyday life. Pat Churchland tells this story that she teaches freshman logic. And, and it takes them a whole quarter to learn modus ponens. But these are students who are spectacularly good at solving social problems. Right? They can figure out what's happening with other people and other groups. And, and, and they're, they're really, really sophisticated in the narrow, narrow regime of social interactions. And it's clear that our brain has a lot of circuits in it, you, and I think that... Terry, Terry excuse me. i, I got to catch a plane, and I've been... What does this have to do with what I said? I, because I would say that intuition can, can no, be No, I'm trying to explain my quote to you that you, you know, botched. Okay, well... I, I, have, I have nothing against consciousness. So, Some of my best friends study consciousness. <laughs> Christoph Koch is a good friend of mine. But I'm, what I'm saying is that it's just the tip of the iceberg, and if you ignore the rest of what's happening in the brain, I think you're doomed to uh, going down the wrong road. 